begin the install by wiping down the walls with a microfiber cloth. This removes dust, spider webs, anything that could hinder the performance of the adhesive. If your walls are really, really dirty and um, maybe covered in grease, if it's in like a kitchen space or something, you may want to consider priming your walls first with a standard wallpaper primer. Let's talk about level. It is very important that you get the first panel level on your wall. Don't use your wall and your ceiling as your level guide. Use the level. If you're working by yourself, you may want to consider placing a level line on your wall. A half inch shorter than the width of your panel, you'll want to make a small dot on your wall and then come along with the level and draw your pencil line. I prefer to work with a friend because I don't like putting level marks on my wall, so if you have a friend available, just grab a tiny little level like this one and get to work. I'm going to begin peeling back the liner. I only want to take off about four to six inches for the initial install. Folding the liner back to get it out of your way. Congratulate yourself if you have gotten your first panel on the wall. That will be the hardest panel you put on the wall. Just making sure it's level is tricky for anyone, a professional or a novice. Um, if you have issues, you can always peel it off the wall and reapply. And I actually did that once for this install because we thought it was level and it wasn't, and so we tried it again and it, it worked out beautifully. So go ahead and use firm pressure with the squeegee to adhere your panel to the wall. Um, the adhesive on the back of our peeling stick wallpaper is activated with pressure. So you definitely want to make sure that the panel is getting full contact with the wall. All the panels are installed, so we're on the final stretch. We're going to go ahead and trim the excess, and I'm actually going to use my wallpaper squeegee as my straight edge to help keep a nice straight edge. Use an X-Acto knife, only an X-Acto knife, and only an X-Acto knife with a new blade. That's very important to keep the fabric peel and stick wallpaper from fraying. Sometimes you may find it helpful to have scissors to cut extra away. I won't need it in this install, but if you have like half a panel with left over, sometimes it's easier to cut the panel and then come in with your blade and trim. After your peel and stick wallpaper has been applied to the wall, you may notice that bubbles have formed between the wallpaper and the wall. That's okay, that can happen as the wallpaper settles. Grab a sewing needle and your squeegee and poke tiny holes into the bubble and squeegee the air out. Just pressing firmly with your fingers and not applying little tiny holes will actually not work. The bubbles will come back. Um, sometimes you can also just peel the panel back and reapply it and the bubbles won't return. It may be a good idea to keep the liner from your wallpaper panels. You'll want this in case you want to reapply the wallpaper somewhere else at some other time. You can just reapply the paper back onto the liner and roll it up, move with it, and reapply it. 
Um, you can also keep these liners if you're going to put up seasonal wallpaper for your holiday decorations. So keep that in mind and don't throw it out unless you're 100% sure you won't be reusing the wallpaper. One of the great things about peel and stick wallpaper is its ease to remove. I'm going to show you how to remove it when you're ready for a new look. That's all you do to remove peel and stick wallpaper, you just pull it off the wall. This wallpaper is fantastic because it does not leave any residue behind, which makes for a very simple cleanup.